Hi, this is Father Paul Seaman at St. George Church in beautiful Tinley Park, Illinois. Glad you're here. Welcome to our little church. It's a wonderful place to pray. It's a wonderful place to be with other people, even as we keep our social distancing and masking and all that uh, sort of thing that we're in the middle of this new normal. But um, we do it and we pray and we're grateful. And I hope that you're listening or watching uh, online on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and our parish website. This past winter, I had the opportunity to spend some time in California. I did a tour of the uh, various Spanish missions uh, that are such an important historical part of California's history. And so as I went along, I met a number of people who I've known for many years, and I stopped at a friend's house in one of the beach communities in uh, California, and he invited me to go to his church, which is not Catholic, but I thought, well, sure, I'd, you know, it's good to get a new experience. And it's a mega church. I mean, it's huge. So we pull into the parking lot, and there's people there giving you directions, all volunteers giving you directions where you can park. And the lot wasn't really very full. Walked into the church, which is more like an auditorium, uh, holds probably about 2,000 people. There were maybe 500 there when we got there. Um, greeted at the door by some wonderful people who were welcoming us there. Took our uh, seats in the uh, auditorium and there was a band playing and the music was great, it was jumping and the production value was terrific. I mean, lighting effects, the whole bit. Uh, it was really quality stuff and it was good worship praise music. So at the end of that, about 20 minutes later, at the end of the, the music, I looked around and every seat in the auditorium of 2000 was filled. Just hundreds of people there. So then the preacher came out. He was pretty casual, jeans and a flannel shirt, uh, gave a reflection on the first few verses of the book of Jonah, one of my favorite biblical books, uh, did a very, it was very interesting. I learned a few things as I was listening to him. I enjoyed it very much. Then he said something that I thought was really important. He said, and now we're going to do something that we do not do very often here at church, but it's an important part of our life. And that is, we're going to have communion. And then he went on to say how important it is that we need to have the right mindset, our hearts and our souls need to be in the right place to receive Holy Communion. Now, I have no idea if he believes in the real presence as we Catholics do, that the bread and wine is the actual body and blood of Christ. I don't know if he believed it, but it sure sounded like he did because he was really putting his people on the spot to say, when you receive communion, when you take the bread, and when you take the wine, which was grapefruit juice, uh, or grape juice, and um, when you receive it, that this is a particular moment of intimacy with the Lord, and that we have to do it worthily. And he admitted that there were church services that he had done when he did not receive the uh, uh, bread and wine himself because he didn't feel he was worthy of it. You know, we as Catholics treasure the Eucharist, and a lot of us know how important it is because we've been on this long Eucharistic fast when we haven't been able to come to church, receive the Eucharist. And it's really heartbreaking because I know so many of our care ministers want to go to people's homes, want to visit with them, but either the ministers themselves are vulnerable or the people who they're visiting who are shut in homes or in nursing homes or in hospitals are physically vulnerable as well. And so it's not a good combination. It's just not safe. But the desire, the deep, true longing that I've heard so many people express to receive the Eucharist, to receive the body and blood of Christ, has just been inspirational. That pastor's message to his people is one that I think that maybe we need to talk about more in the Catholic Church, because too often people have the mistaken idea that if I have, 
if I go to church, I have to receive communion because that's what you do. That's part of the routine. It's part of the ritual. Not so. It's not so. If a person feels that they're not in a good state of grace, if they feel that they have sins, serious sins, in their heart and soul that need to be forgiven through the sacrament of, of reconciliation, then it's perfectly fine not to receive the Eucharist at that moment because it is important that we keep in mind that we need to approach the altar worthily so that when we put our hands out, we recognize that we are taking the very body and blood of Christ in our hands. And when we consume it, that we are then called to become what we receive. So, I hope that as you look forward to the next time you're coming to church and you look forward to receiving the Eucharist, that you'll keep in mind how very important it is that our hearts and our minds be in the right place. As we used to say, it'd be in a state of grace. And what's a state of grace? It really is simply making sure that connection with God is real and true. Because when we become disconnected, we become disgraced. God bless you. May God's grace be with you today and always.